Hello, and thank you so much for joining me today. So I start my day off with water. This mason jar is already empty. I started filming after remembering um, later on. And I just wanted to share this to say that I also feel like a big part of my nourishment is being in nature. That's part of how I feed myself. I uh, broke my fast today with watermelon and was at the beach, uh, which we love doing at least once a week when we can. Um, watermelon is so hydrating and I'm so glad it's the season for it. A couple hours later, still at the beach, had some of these delicious grapes. I try to avoid plastic whenever we can, but we sometimes uh, do get some when we are shopping. These were delicious. And then later on, I had some dates. I prefer having dates in my smoothies, but my reality is that sometimes I do eat them. I just make sure that um, I rinse my mouth after eating them. I also had some dried figs just to make sure I got enough of those calories in. As a breastfeeding mama, really important to get calories in. And when I don't have enough bananas on hand or other dense fruit like papayas, then dates are what I do. Um, and then I'm showing this to show that I uh, was doing some meal prep today. I was sprouting some mung beans. I am often sprouting something in the house, mung beans or lentils or buckwheat. I have a whole video on sprouting. You can check out on my videos and my channel. These are some mung beans that I sprouted over a few days. And here are some mushrooms, some sun-dried mushrooms I rehydrated with a mix of, I think it was pimiento, fresh coconut milk that I made, um, black pepper, garlic, and it's been rehydrating. I will add to that some other things for dinner. But before, as my first course for dinner, I'm making some orange juice. And I um, have this, we have this old school orange juice maker because if you saw my last video on our house, we are just on one solar panel right now and we're waiting for the other solar panels to come. So in the meantime, we're very judicious about our um, electric use, our power usage. So we have this old hand powered orange juice machine we're currently using. So I got a little bit of an arm workout <laughs> and make some delicious orange juice for my first course. I had a little bit more than this. I think I bought a mason jar and a half. And then for the second course, um, I'm making this dish, which is um, cutting up some cabbage um, that I will add to the mung beans um, and I will make them more digestible by just massaging them. You can add, um, if you like salt or eat salt, you can add some salt. You can also just add lemon juice to the mix, but literally just massaging with the hands will break down some of those cell wall bonds to make them softer and more digestible. So I do that with the mung beans and I will do that also with the cabbage. I did add some lemon juice to this. I will, I will let you know that um, to reduce it even further. Um, and uh, cabbage is just chock full of antioxidants, um, but it can be hard in the digestive system for many people. So you can choose to eat more um, softer greens like romaine lettuce or butter lettuce, but I do like incorporating cabbage into my diet. And so that's one way I do that. Another way to reduce the mung beans is through the mortar and pestle or what I call pock pock. Here's a pock pock right here. It's a small mortar and pestle. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add a little bit of ginger. Ginger is a beautiful anti-inflammatory, also a warming root. And so I will add that into the mortar. I will add some garlic, uh, nature's natural antibacterial, if you like to include that in your food. I like to put garlic once or twice um, a, a week. I don't do it always. I find it to be stimulating, and so I don't always want that stimulation. But I'll use half a clove of garlic, some ginger. 
uh, some hot pepper. It was a foggy, cool evening, so I wanted some of that. And so I'm going to grind that with a pestle in the pock pock. And I will add to that the mung bean. So you can massage it with your hands, or you can add the mung beans to your mortar and pestle and break it down even further um, this way. So what I'm doing with this recipe, with this dinner, is I'm basically making a thick mung bean stew um, that recalls for me, recalls, it's not the same thing as maybe some of the bean stews I grew up with. So um, when I lived in Nigeria, I'm of a Nigerian origin. I spent the first 12 years of my life in Nigeria. We often would, would have stews, um, a goosey stew, okra stew, thick vegetable stews. And so I love to sometimes recreate in the raw living foods version. It doesn't taste the same, but for me, frankly, it tastes even more flavor rich because it's living food. And so I'll mix all these vegetables together, mung beans, um, spices, tomato, onions, the reduced cabbage. I will add to this some dulse or wakame. I will let this sit and marinate in its juices and it is so delicious. I add to that my mushrooms that I marinated. I will also add some freshly homemade coconut cream. We get fresh coconuts uh, here where we live. And then I have a side plate of lettuce, which is kind of my fufu or eba, or if you are from this part of the world, chapati or naan, wherever you are in the world, we often have something, a grain or something we then dip into our stew. And that's what I do, but the raw vegan version and it's delicious. So that's what I ate that day and I wanted to share that with you and I'm ending with showing you a little bit of my um, offering to the ocean. Um, I believe that it's important to give back um, to nature, to being communion with her. So uh, it's flower moon season the full moon. I hope you had a beautiful full moon. I send you love. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with anybody you think might benefit. Um, check out my Summer Synergy Cleanse if you are interested in that for up-leveling your home and your body through a detox. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye. <music>